Okay, so how does how does WinLink work? That's what we're all here to talk about. And and what the heck is WinLink? Well, WinLink is basically, in a nutshell, it's email, but for your amateur radio account. So in this case, your credentials are not your company's credentials. Your credentials actually come directly from your FCC ham radio license. So in my case, my call sign is W6AH. So that's my uh, that's my credentials that I have. And that is how the WinLink system knows me and all of the mail that's going in and out of my account. Now, if you went on to wavetalkers.com and you went to the WinLink page and you followed the instructions, you should have been able to get the your, your WinLink account, uh, get the WinLink application downloaded, installed, and then get your account created. And when you did that, you had to enter in your call sign as your credentials, and that's all set up. You also, at the same time, you had to enter in a real world email address. In this case, let's say I'm chris at planetyondo.com. It's not a real email address, but let's say it is. Um, but that would be your actual email address that if there's any communication that needs to happen between the WinLink service and you, like say you lose your password and you gotta reset it, they're gonna send it back to this address that you've set up, but all of your mail is going to come through your amateur radio call sign address. So we got our credentials set up now. The next thing is you need your application in order to send and receive all of these messages. And in the world of WinLink, the application's name is something called RMS Express or Radio Message Service Express. And I know this is very confusing because we keep talking about getting your WinLink email account and, and you're using WinLink, but the name of the application is actually called RMS Express. So when you go to winlink.org and you go to the download link, you're downloading the RMS Express application. You're then going to install that. You get it installed just like you would any other application. And it's a good idea to just go ahead and create a dedicated folder for that. We have that in the instructions. You install the application inside of there. Now, there's a couple of things inside of RMS Express that should be pretty familiar to you already. There's a compose button. We're gonna come back to the compose button in just a minute. But there's also things that you're familiar with like an inbox, an outbox, the sent mail messages. All of that works pretty similar to what you've already experienced in your regular email. But there are a couple of other features. One of which is something called forms. And forms is incredibly helpful, especially for emergency communicators that are partnered with shared agencies because WinLink has embedded inside of it a ton of different forms that are ready to go that your shared agency would be expecting to be able to fill out or common traffic that you may need to send. We're gonna come back to forms in just a little while. In fact, Dave W0DHG is going to do a little demonstration of forms here in just a little while. So let's look at the next thing that's a little different. The next one is post to outbox. Now in your regular email program, you would compose that email and you hit the send button and it sends your message over to your outbox. Well, inside of WinLink, what you do is you click this button that says post to outbox and then it physically moves the mail message that you just wrote it puts it in your outbox and it just waits it just parks it there it doesn't go anywhere quite yet it waits for the next action from you and that next action is to use this open session button now this inside of winlink the open session button does a whole bunch of different things um, first of all it's how you choose to both transmit and receive your mail through the WinLink application. You can use both internet service or you can use RF or radio in order to send that message. And every single message has that ability. Now, the brilliant thing about this is if you have access to the internet, great. Use the internet, send the messages fast. If you are without access to the internet, you can use 
RF. And that's where a lot of the magic, most of the time that we're going to spend in the rest of this class is going to be focused on. But today we'll, we'll look a lot more at the internet. There's also multiple protocols, and we're going to look at that in just a second uh, without getting too much into some of the garbledygook inside of there. So we've got uh, that open session button. So let's compose a message. You do that by simply clicking the compose message button. And obviously this is a simplified graphical look at this. So we'll, we're just gonna, we'll step through the real application in just a minute. So you compose a message and right away, you notice something pretty interesting. The from field is no longer your real world email address. The from field actually says your amateur radio call sign. In my case, it's W6AH that is automatically entered into the from field for you. Next is the to field. And the to field is another place where the world of WinLink and the world of normal email diverge. You can, of course, enter in a regular real world email address and you can send that email to any real world email account. You can also enter in simply a call sign. Now, why is this such a powerful thing? Well, let's say you get, uh, uh, there's an emergency in your area, uh, communications are all down, you deploy out to a local shelter and you uh, have a bunch of people at the shelter and you need to be able to send uh, wellness messages that say, hey, so-and-so is here at the shelter and uh, they're trying to communicate with their friends and family uh, out, of the, out of the disaster area to let them know that they're okay. You can send emails through WinLink to a real world email address. So that's one of the, that is a huge thing that you're able to do. You also do not need to know somebody's actual email address if they're an amateur radio operator using WinLink. So for instance, you can use a call sign. So if I wanted to send a message to David, I could simply type in his call sign, KK6DA, hit send, boom, the message goes directly to him. The subject and the message section, these work pretty much exactly the way that a regular email would work. Um, you just enter in a subject, whatever it happens to be, you put in a message, and now, once again, we diverge. So, instead of clicking the send button that you have in your regular email, what you're going to do is you're going to click post to outbox, and when you do that, it's gonna take that message once again, it's gonna move it into the outbox and it's just gonna park that message there. It's gonna wait for you to have some more interactions. Then you need to click the open session button. So you can start to see WinLink email is much more of a manual process because it gives you a lots of points along the way of sending this message to decide what is the best way for your particular circumstance right now to send this message. So when you click open session, what happens is a little pop-up menu appears and there's a lot of choices in here. And this is, this can be very confusing. When the first time I looked at this, I was like, what do I select? How do I understand what this whole menu thing here is? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. See the, all of the areas here are all grouped together into four major areas. The top section are all of your RMS gateways. Remember, these are your radio message service gateways. This is essentially the core of what WinLink is. And we're gonna, we're gonna walk through an example of how this works in just a minute. There's different protocols that are listed in there. I've got two of them listed. There's a lot more. I've got Telnet WinLink and Packet WinLink, but there's, there's a bunch more that are in there. The whole bottom section, these, there's three more tiers here. Those are other ways that you can use WinLink to send your messages. It may be peer-to-peer -peer where you're just taking uh, two WinLink stations and you're connecting to each other directly. Um, and that can be done either via the internet or via RF. There's radio only where it's just going back and forth. And there's also a Telnet post office. For right now, we're just gonna group all of that stuff into the other category and we'll set it aside until later in the course. But this is still pretty confusing. How do we figure out which thing to select? Well. If you look in the list of all of the things that show up here and it says Telnet, if there's a listing that says Telnet, that means it's using the internet. If you have an option that does not say Telnet, then it's using the radio or it's using RF. Um, and so you just get to choose which way you want to send your message out. 
So that's what happens there. We're going to keep things simple today. We're going to use Telnet. And you may wonder like, hey, this is all about radio, uh, amateur radio, and, and we really want to use RF. Well, if you have access to the internet, the internet is much faster to send that message. So use the internet, use whatever means of communication that you have at your disposal and have the flexibility to adapt as need be. So we're going to choose Telnet wooden link as our session type that we're going to choose here. And then we go ahead and it's going to close that pop-up and it's going to open a whole other window. And this window is going to be called the session window. And every single type of session, all of those different protocols, they will open different windows depending on which one that you've chosen. But they all basically have a couple of components here. And the, the one that you mostly need to pay attention to is the settings. Now, if you're using any of the Telnet options, there's nothing to do inside of settings because it's all kind of pre-configured. It pretty much works. It sends uh, the message via your computer's already established internet connection. However, if you're using RF, that's where a lot of the hangups can be where you have to configure how you want WinLink to talk to your particular radio. And we're going to cover that throughout the rest of this course. We're going to spend a lot of time uh, doing that portion, uh, portion and make sure everybody's able to do that. Next is the start button. And this is the basically the go button. It's like, okay, this is my, finally my send and receive button. I can send this message out to somebody. So you click the start button and what happens? Well, this is where things get really interesting. When you click start inside of your session window, if you're using one of the internet or one of the Telnet protocols, then WinLink, or RMS Express, the application you're using, is going to use your computer's internet connection. It's gonna to connect to the internet and it's going to send out those messages that you've created, all that traffic, and it's going to send it to some RMS gateway that is also connected on the internet. Now, remember the RMS gateway, these are essentially email servers, but within the WinLink world, if you will. And they can, many of them are connected physically to the internet so that traffic can be easily sent through them. Notice that all of the arrows I've got drawn here are bi-directional because when you click start, not only does all of your messages get sent out of your, uh, your WinLink account and get sent out to whoever you're trying to address them to, but it will also then receive messages at the same time. So it's this immediate back and forth exchange that takes place. So that gets your email off to one of the RMS gateways, but how does it know how to get to the place where you're trying to go? Well, other users may be connected to other RMS gateways that are established around the world, and they can all just talk through the internet. It's a bi-directional communication. If the internet is available, they will happily use that pathway to send their messages back and forth. However, there are times when there is no access to the internet, in which case RF comes into play and RMS gateways can connect to each other directly via RF. Now this may be through VHF, UHF, HF. It could be a variety of different protocols. It may be VAR or VARFM or VARHF. It's, there's a bunch of them out there um, that, that could be used, but they can send messages to each other and pass that traffic even if there is no connection to the internet. And eventually it will find some message, some, some gateway that is either connected to the internet and upload its messages through the gateway or through the internet, or it'll just con continue using uh, RF as it needs to. So that's, that's one way that you're able to send your, send your messages. It may be that just that last mile is hopping via RF, but it may be a lot of it is traversing via the internet. So what's the other way to send messages? Well, the other way is via RF directly from your computer using your own radio. Now you're gonna to connect to your radio via some kind of cable. Usually it's going to be USB, uh, it could be a serial connection cable, it could be a variety of different things. You might use a, um, a TNC such as a, or you might use a, a, a tool such as a, um, name went right out of my head signal link thank you a signal link see this is my <laughs> <game at> this. 
It may be that you've got a, <laughs> okay. a signal link connecting between your radio and your computer. And so that all the message goes there. And then your radio sends via RF out to one of the RMS gateways. And then that just connects into the overall network. This allows for an incredible amount of redundancy uh, and allows you to get your message to where it needs to go via essentially any means that you need. So this is the basic setup of what we're going to be doing. Explain something.